his wife and the YFS media team. And today I'm joined by Craig Laster from Mogai Football Club, who's here today to talk about Mogai's plan for the up and coming future. Craig, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. Yourself? Yeah, I'm not too bad. How are you finding lockdown? Uh, getting a bit like Groundhog Day now, but yeah. I've got used to it and it's the kind of the new norm, isn't it? Yeah, I think everyone's kind of feeling that way at the moment, especially when you can't go out and do much. No, but, not at all. Being able to get some football in, so yeah. that's, that's at least slightly gets you out of the house for a bit. So let's just get right into it. Craig, over the past few months, Mogai FC have been developing a plan to remodel one of the parks in the local area. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, I mean, we've, well, we've been working on the plan, I'd probably say, for a good few years now, not just even in the past couple of months. There was a few sites within Mulgai that we were looking at. There was Oakburn Park, There was uh, we were in charts with a local sports club where the Wildcats hockey was. Turned out the bit of ground there wasn't going to be big enough for an 11 side pitch, and Oakburn, just due to being so close to residents, wasn't it going to be ideal either due to floodlighting and local residents' concerns about parking and everything like that? And then, if you know Mulgai, Clinic Park's quite a big park and it's got a perfect sized area, which is a dish used the red ash pitch um, there, which when we went through all the sort of uh, auctions that were available to us, we were always quite keen on this one because we wouldn't need a change of use for the council. Because at one point it was a football pitch, all we want to do is upgrade it and make it a much more usable area. Not just for football, because within the plans we've got other things in there, but the vast majority of it, due to the size of the area and everything, it'd be perfect to convert into a, a 4G Astro area. It sounds really promising and that it's for the right sort of cause. It's for the people that, are, that may not know what... Other plans do you have for the park that are non-football related? Well, we've tied in, um, well, Mogai Football Club is in Eastern Berkshire. We're probably, arguably, the biggest, or if not, one of the biggest. Certainly, I would say the second biggest. Um, we've got over 600 members, and that's coaching staff, players, committee members, and other people that just generally help out at all levels. So we're quite a big community group. On top of that, there's the Mulgai Community Council and the Mulgai Development Trust and the Mulgai Environmental Section that's just coming up as well. So we tied in with all these sections to see what we could do with Lennox Park and all the community development people and the community council all had their own ideas. So we've managed to come together with a plan that can join all the groups within Mulgai into making that area better. So as well as the football pitch, we're going to be looking at putting some form of running track there as well that people yep. can use, an outdoor gym. The play park in, in Lennox Park's already got planning permission is underway doing up the play park. Um, the developed trust are looking to put more walkways and do up the just the park in general, which we have support as well. Yeah. And there's plans in there for allotments or a community growing project as well. So as well as sport, there's a lot for the community that's within our plan, within everybody else's plan. I think it's really great how Mogai have kind of not just only targeted football, but they've targeted all aspects of the park. It's really, really promising. What but can I ask, what can inspire this project? Basically, well, from our point of view, uh, I'll go with our point of view first. Yeah. A club in Mulgai size that does football from fun fours right up to over 35s, walking football, women's football, girls' football, disabilities, and doesn't have a home park to call its own is just ridiculous. I mean, the, the yeah. hard work that the, the, the people behind the scenes, Natalie, Elaine and uh, Caroline do, to make, to make the club run, and that's just getting facilities for all the teams to play football on week in, week out, is as good as a full-time job for them. 
the, yeah. the work hard to make sure we have facilities and that's speaking to the rugby club, speaking to the council and just it's it, we need if we had our own facility, it wouldn't take away all the need to use council and that, but at least we would have a home where we could get the vast majority of our teams playing. So from our point of view, it's the next stage in the club moving forward. Because when Caroline took it over and it became Mogai Football Club, it's grown vastly and it's yeah. done a lot for the community in that time. And it's now time for Mogai Football Club to have a place to say, this is our home and this is our home park and we can do things there that we've had to, if you like, beg, borrow and steal from other people or yeah. ask the council for um, that. And then there's always been, if you like, talking, Mogai, between all the different groups in making Lennox Park better because it's a great area, but it could be better. You could do yeah. much more with the paths there. You could create more cycle paths, more nice walks down by the river. You could plan nicer things yeah. at the moment because it's it's maintained by the council but that's that's basically all it's done and i mean that is you can't expect the council to do everything in an area but they maintain it they keep it reasonably tidy they cut the grass and everything like that but you could turn it into a nice area when people are coming off the train before maybe they go to the west island way they could go for a walk around that it would just add so much more to it, adding cycle rooms, uh, cycle paths, nice walks, planting various new flowers, and then having a nice sports facility there yeah. that people could come enjoy a game of football while in the past and come and watch it. People can start supporting Mulgai again. Because at the moment, to watch a Mulgai team, you could have be travelling to Bishop Briggs or you could be going all the way up to the, the high school whereas this would be right in the centre and people could come along and support their local team and watch all age groups play. It's really brilliant. I think what Mulga are trying to do is really brilliant and it's really considerate for the public and the community. But these things can be difficult to plan at the moment because of the obvious pandemic. But do Mulga have an expected delivery date for the plan at the moment? Well, we've hit our first phase, and that was to get everything into the EDC for it was some point in January. So at the moment, we are in EDC's hands because we've put in with the other community groups a proposal. It's now for EDC to come back to us and grant, grant that and say, yep, yeah, we agree that's something that can be done. Let's put it on the land development plan and let's get this all in and talk about how you're going to take it to the next stages. Yeah. So, at the moment, I couldn't give you any sort of dates or anything at all like that, other than we're waiting on the council. Yeah. Somebody for the council's watching this, they could maybe come back to us sooner rather than later. <laughs> from a Mogai football club perspective, what are Mogai looking to gain from these facilities? We're just looking to make sure that we can support all our teams. The one thing that COVID showed us is if we had our own facility, we would have been able to offer more and keep the teams running. Because, I mean, within all the guidelines and everything like that, we've had teams just having to hop on to bits of grass whenever yeah. they're available. Because for the first part of the lockdown, when you when we came out the really strict lockdown, we were allowed to train again and stuff like that. But the council didn't open the school lets, so there was no pitches. Uh, yeah. And the pitches, like the grass pitches and that, that were available, didn't have goals on them because the council weren't yeah. operating facilities. So we were just using anything we could to get the kids' teams out training. And if we had had our own facility, we would have had an astral pitch with all the goals and all the kit in one place so the teams could have just kept on. Yeah, more guy through. could have ran it, yeah. We could, have, we could have ran our own thing without having to look elsewhere because we would have had our own pitch, we would have had our own equipment and everything like that. So, yeah, um, that's, that's the main thing. 
and a place to call home and be able to offer it out when it's not getting used for football to other community groups because an Astro pitch is it's with all weather. And yeah, it's useful. Yeah, and if you take, for instance, Mulgai Primary School, they actually mm-hmm. do their sports day on the red ash pitch at Lennox Park. Oh. And in years where that it's been raining, yeah. that's potentially not been possible, but mm-hmm. they would be able to use this pitch potentially on sports days. Yeah. And it will be a much safer environment because not, it won't just be an open area. It will be a fenced-in area that's maintained. So when the kids, the teachers don't need to come up and clear whatever's on the ash pitch beforehand. So, I mean, there's lots of, there's lots of, if you like, irons in the fire if we get the permission to go ahead with what we can do. Yeah. And there's enough people in the club with a lot of ideas that it could become a brilliant facility. Yeah, it would have been a bit like that Mogai wish they sort of had this facility available during COVID and they could have prevented football from being so stop-start. Yeah. That's that's one of the biggest things. That is the the biggest thing that's actually came out of it is if we did have it. And in fairness, I will say though that West Rugby Club have been very good to us during this. They they've gave us access to the pitch when available on a Saturday. Pretty much gave us the run of the place when mm-hmm. the restrictions have allowed us. So I'd like to say thanks to them, to the West Rugby guys. They've, they've helped us out a lot. Yeah, it's really good. It's really good to see people doing their bit for other communities and other sports clubs during this difficult period. But when when or if the plan gets to go ahead, how will Guy look to fund the project, especially during the current circumstances? Um, that is going to be our biggest challenge. Um, the you will we will obviously engage with the SFA and then you've got like the sports development scotland and stuff yeah. we'll look at all avenues for grants that are available for projects like this there will be a probably a, a decent sized chunk needing to be developed with the club's own fundraising as well and we'll potentially need to look at finding sponsors or maybe a community partner or something like that that wants to get involved with the project and help us help us fund it basically but these are all things that we're talking about in the background but we can't really push on fully just yet until we actually get the nod the edc are in agreement with this is a a good idea uh, yeah we're, we're actually doing a bit of fundraising this this uh, starting this weekend we're doing a, a last person standing through all the mm-hmm. teams in the club to start the the pot for potentially our new home ground so the fundraising started on our side but as soon as we get a, a more solid yes for edc we will then go and look at the bigger picture and funding and looking for uh, sponsors to support us in delivering it yeah in your personal opinion if you could look forward a few years from now say and what would you look like to see the pitch being used for how would you like to see these facilities being used um, in my, um, <laughs> you're probably saying in a three to five year plan, if Caroline was on, yeah. the, she would tell you about the sports domes when she was with the SFA and she went to Scandinavia. Um, there was pitches that basically, they look like inflatable covers that go over yeah. so they could be used, the weather doesn't uh, affect them effect them there it's an interesting thing if you look up just like sports domes in scandinavia and how how cool they look and because scandinavia is where their conditions are probably worse than ours and that's caroline's uh, plan before she retires that that mogai fc will have a sports dome um, my plan would be probably somewhere within three years having the pitch in place with um uh with nice changing room facilities with a clubhouse, a wee stand, and getting back to having an amateur team running and playing on a Saturday afternoon out in Mulgai. Uh, that's where I would think it would be a great achievement for the club if we could do that in the next three to five years. Have a facility built, good changing areas, clubhouse, and a nice wee stand. That I think would be a brilliant achievement for the club. And 
making sure that we're always working in partnership with the other community groups that are yeah. so that they get the benefit of it. And if that's them using their clubhouse as well as the sports facility, that would be amazing. Yeah, so keeping them involved. Yeah. And in the response form that Mulgaire sent, they spoke about Air United and Spartans used as examples in the form of how they've benefited their local community through football. Is this something Mulgaire are looking to replicate? Very much so. Spartans are probably the pinnacle of what you can do and what they offer to the community is amazing when you go on the SFA things and stuff like that they talk about the Spartans a lot and they show what a community football team can actually do for the community uh, which is something to aspire to um, I don't think we'll ever get as far as having a junior team playing out in Mulgai um, but if we got if we got back to if we got to being as community involved as they are which I would say we are almost there but we don't have our own facility where we can invite people to and we don't have a clubhouse or anything like that where a spam has got all that so they can do even more than just football and you can offer it's things simple things just offer a place for people to come and meet during the day to have a chat and that sort of stuff that could could be part of this project if we get the go-ahead to go ahead with it in the sort of three to five year plan. Yeah, it's really about benefiting everyone. So one thing that Mugai proposed is the addition of a food growing area. Can you give us a bit more, and tell us a bit more about that? Yeah, that's, um, that's one of the things that's been in one of the last, um, this is, it shows you how far it's went on. In the last LDP plan, there was a bit of loggerheads between the groups because one of the groups wanted to turn the football pitch into allotments rather than keeping it as the purpose that it was mm, yeah. to turn that into. So since then, and then lead up to this one, with everybody talking in the group, everybody thought, yeah, it'd be great to have a community growing project. And have the football pitch because people could then get involved with both and I don't think well guy needed an allotment area the size of a football pitch in, mm-hmm. in my opinion but if you actually didn't have an allotment area and a community growing projects different from allotments because people just go down there to help out and they grow things and it funds itself because what would be grown would be taken potentially uh, Gavin's Mill from what I hear from the environmental group and Gavin's Mill would sell the produce that was grown which kind of gives you it comes into that theory of the donut economy where basically you can grow a full economy just within its own local environment and I think that's what some of the the environmental groups, the community council, are looking at that that theory, and that would be the community growing project would get people together who maybe don't know much about gardening and get taught about that, grow produce, sell it in the local area, that money stays in the economy, and it all just goes round and round, and at the same time, it's all within Lennox Park, and all mm-hmm. from the LDP2 plan that we've all put together that encompasses sport and community together, I would probably say. Yeah, it's just really going to work in a cycle of benefiting everyone and just an endless sort of cycle, really. Yes. It's, it's, so, uh, and, and growing things is never going to go away the same as people want to do sport and outdoor mm-hmm. activity is never going to go away. Yeah. So yep. Really makes sense. Something that's highlighted a fair amount in the form is the socio-economic benefits of the plan. Is that something that has come up more recently because of how people have coped with lockdown and how they've spoke out about how they found it? Yeah, but I think the sort of socio-economic thing is I think it's becoming bigger in general right now anyway. Um, yeah. If you can get more things local and develop local it's better for everybody so not to have it in the plan I think 
would have been silly. In regards to that, I don't think that's driven as much from the football club. I think yeah. football clubs support that idea. I think that's more driven from your community council and the community development trust because they are looking at that for the wider community past sport and how that would benefit the wider community. But we t- that. You touched on the other community groups there. How have Mogai planned how they'll work with those other community groups when this plan is complete or up and running? Well, it's already in place. Um, Caroline, um, Caroline is part of the Mogai Community Council, uh, yeah. as well as holding a, a high role within the football club. And the Mogai Development Trust are now engaging with all three of us and we would have liked to have um, had a meeting before we all put our LDP in person but it wasn't possible so everything was done variously over uh, Zooms and stuff like that and then there's people from the Mogai Community Council who are in the Development Trust and all, all of them are coming, we're all coming together more than what we have in the past and potentially maybe that is due to COVID, I don't know, whereas everybody used to be standalone, but for, for the better good of Mulgai, I think now, everybody, all three of the major groups have came together and said, let's actually work together rather than looking at our own agendas, maybe we could get all our agendas to work to better the community, and that's, that's what I think will happen going forward, and I think it's just going to get stronger and stronger, the three groups. It's only benefit that it, which can only benefit the local area. Yeah, I think most people agree with me when I say this that it's a really great project and that most people listening to us will hopefully well it will be hopefully something that they back. Just finally though, Craig, is there anything you would like to say to the people who are interested in supporting this project? Just um from whatever aspect that you're looking at, whether it's sport or whether it's you want to be involved with the environmental, the community growing. Mulgrae is a great place as it is. This this would only add to it. I would suggest that everybody contacts the group they feel most aligned with and get involved. Because at some point we'll need the whole community to come together. We're not going to be able to get funding to fund the whole thing. So we're going to have to find other ways, whether that's getting sponsorships from local companies, businesses, doing fundraising ourselves, we're all going to have to do our bit because it's not all, we're not going to be able to get it all from government, sports funding and everything like that. So it'll be a great effort and it'll be well worth it and for decades to come, generations to come, they'll have a better, they'll have a better Lennox Park for it, yeah. I believe. And I'm very proud to be involved with it and I just look forward to seeing it going to the next stages. Craig, thank you so much for your time today. On behalf of, on behalf no on everyone from YFS, good luck with the project. Perfect, thank you very much. Thank you, Craig. Take it easy, bye. Bye.